Anand Sharma from CXOTV.News, a flagship brand under the umbrella of Techless Media Group. A warm hello and welcome to everybody. This is the third year of our webinar series titled Marketing Mondays. We have been touching upon various topics of interest to the marketing fraternity, and you can watch all the past events on demand at www.cxotv.news. Today's topic is AI in marketing. The entire business community is talking about AI. There have been deliberations on how to make best use of AI for business purposes. How can marketing be left behind? For this, to discuss, we have Mr. Tharuma Nathan with us on the panel. Tharuma is currently the Chief Marketing Officer for Telas Software Private Limited, based in Malaysia which focuses on business process automation development for small and medium enterprises. Welcome, Tharuma. It's my privilege to discuss this relevant topic with you. And first of all, thank you, Mr. Anand, for the um, introduction. And I would like to first thank uh, CXO TV and Tech Media Plus for organizing such a wonderful uh, Marketing Monday series. Uh, I'm really interested to to continue this webinar right now and you know we hope we can get insiders uh from from the participant as well you know and from Mr. Anna as well so thank you for having me here thank you pleasure is all mine so let's start the discussion uh let me just ask uh in the beginning how the year 2021 has been for you what challenges issues or achievements you would like to share uh sure Mr. Anna. So basically, 2021 uh, definitely been a, a great year. Uh, despite we having a pandemic and uh, knowing that a lot of uh, uh, health issues been uh, working around, but uh, technology has been helping us to actually get through it. Uh, we're still able to meet people virtually. We still can could connect people worldwide. So uh, personally, for me, in terms of challenges we face is we're definitely adapting with the new norm, uh, the new norm where we could meet people, but we couldn't really see them in physical. And we need to utilize those technologies, uh, no matter those younger, uh, youngest uh, uh, personnel or even elders, they have to adapt to the technology that we are actually using right now. And um, it's uh, it was a hard time for sure uh, in terms of finance as well um developments in terms of you know the budgeting we have is been uh, could be cut down and investors are being having a i can say um you know second thoughts of investing more monies in terms of development as well and that's all the challenges uh, we've been seeing uh, throughout 21 2021 um other than that, uh, achievement, I would say uh, they, they are far greater because uh, we definitely successful have adapted to the new norm. Uh, we have utilized a lot of technologies, uh, most importantly, uh, very common uh, video calls, uh, virtual webinars, virtual meetings, and uh, other technologies. So as we speak today, AI, AI has been a, it's a great growth uh, since uh, 20, 18 uh where ai was seen as uh, uh can be seen in certain places we really can't see the big implementation but as as we move now ai has been everywhere we can see it everywhere uh in terms of decision making in terms of even buying product as well and yeah in personally for me uh i would say uh uh the achievement from telos especially from my side has been that uh, we able to convert and transform those small media enterprises from a traditional marketing or a traditional method of running a business and change over to a digital uh, marketing, digital business, and you know try to adapt to the new norm. So uh, that's uh, I would say that's uh, that's what we had in 2021. Sure, sure, sure. No, happy to hear about your achievements as well. What sort of uh, outlook you have for 2022? uh what would be the trend of for this year what do you think um definitely in terms of uh 2022 we're going to see that how we're going to utilize the technology that has been created for us to adapt uh especially when we're talking the current topic is ai ai is a very big uh cloud we say it's a big uh 
title and we have below there as you mentioned the title we have uh, arps we have uh, virtual reality we have augmented realities and also uh, ai uh, technologies so for 2022 will be is how we're going to utilize this more efficient and also we could cut down costs in a way that when we're going to invest to this kind of technology we don't lose out too much on finances financing side and that would be the trend and recently uh there's a new uh metaverse as we heard the new uh i think we say virtual world we can say is just started and uh, there's a lot of marketers or even you can say that initiative taken to actually utilize metaverse because uh metaverse is i think the target markets are to the most millennium and gen z's uh target markets so uh i mean there's a lot of things we can expect this year to be honest uh other than that uh the trends we are looking at um how are we going to really train marketers to adapt utilize and successfully create their own way of marketing using digital ways so that's uh the trends we are looking at this year okay all right great 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 so uh, uh you talked about metaverse you want to you know spend more time on this you know uh, uh, uh because that's that's a very interesting topic these days yeah i uh metaverse uh has been a great announcement uh, we've, we've been waiting for because a very very in a can say we are in a virtual world in a way that when we are making events and to to yeah. prevent the outbreaks of COVID. But uh, Metaverse has been a, a different topic. It's more like having a, a real world in a virtual. They say we can even create me and Arden in a virtual world, we can say. <laughs> so and, and always, like, always on virtual environment where, you know, let's say it's a Starbucks uh, sort of thing, which is on Metaverse. And, you know, you, you walk in into the store and then uh, uh, you order a virtual coffee and then <laughs> you, yeah. you sit down for a virtual meeting, right? Yes, so it's uh, definitely, it's, um, I wouldn't say it's a weird approach, but it's definitely be something that we have to welcome, knowing that uh, we are going the track to a, a digital era, of course. So it's something they have to welcome. And in terms of uh, how we're going to utilize uh, this particular uh, technology is that every countries are not the same right now. Uh, certain countries are already off from the pandemic stage and uh, some of countries are still in the the high cases and are still worried of opening their borders to others and new businesses new markets to entry to these countries is going to take some time knowing that there's no physical interaction between investors and uh, business owners in different countries so metaverse has been a, a great uh, platform where i we, we heard that we actually like what anand mentioned that we actually even can buy coffee virtual coffee so virtual meeting can be done exactly there but one thing we can see that there is an interaction we can really see the person in front of us despite it's a it's a cartoon character way we can see but it's nothing wrong to try. We never know where we can go in Metaverse. So absolutely, it's, uh, yeah, we, we never know. Because we are skeptical earlier when we we're talking about even having a, a contract signing through video calls. It's very skeptical to hear when back in 2018. But now in 2020, video calls are something that is like a face-to-face -face meet. It's something natural right now. So. You know, definitely we are welcoming Metaverse to the marketing field and we see what we can go through there, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, how do you see AI happening in the marketing, uh, you know, field and uh, what sort of use cases we, we have since you, you are in the in this field? Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, in terms of use cases, we have seen, um, I mean, in 2020, 2021, there's a lot of applications of AI. And I can take a very simple example uh, when it comes to online shopping, we can say. Uh, online shopping, we have seen uh, been, uh, been a big increase in uh, years to come. And we can see that how shopping, we can see predictive analytics being used mostly in shopping. Uh, we might buy one, uh, one item and the next thing we know, we are suggested with five. And, we realize or oh, one of them something that we need so 
uh, the use cases in terms of uh, in terms of predictive analytics in shopping or e-commerce has been increasing very well, and uh, it's, it's definitely a very good revenue making as well for marketers as well uh, with utilize of AI. So it's not uh, we humans are sitting and you know giving them uh, this what you should buy, rather than we are looking at their behavior and how they are selecting their item. And we just try to link it up with the data set that we have. So uh, by using that, we actually can give what the customer wants and what the customer might need in future when they're buying it. And uh, I, uh, talking about earlier about Starbucks, uh, we have seen that now recently Starbucks has been creating their, their predictive analytics as well uh, by looking at the purchasing buy of their history of their customers by using the app and suggesting them what to buy the next. So from that, they actually can actually, you know, focus at what item or what particular product they have to emphasize on. So uh, marketers can really put effort on that particular product on how they want to market. Because it's all about uh, customer behavior, we can say. Because uh, we can't really, we can't really change customer behavior on buying things, but we can learn how customer uh, is behaving uh, data sets are very important. Like you say, uh, case studies, use case studies works because of the data sets right now. And I mean, for sure, in another two, three years from now, the data set is going to be increasing and we have to utilize the data set to create more use cases as well. So Starbucks has so been how, crazy. How, do you, how would you see uh, AI, uh, you know, influencing uh, the marketing of uh, IT in B2B world? AI in B2B world. Uh, so we can see in terms of, because like Starbucks is a B2C concept, so we're going to see B2B. Yeah. All right, so in terms of B2B, we're going to see how uh, customers are looking at improvise their workflow, first of all. Um, for particular example, uh, in terms of what we are transforming, we are B2B uh, based company. So what we are focusing on how we're going to make their workflow efficient. Efficiency mm -hmm. is a very important uh, keyword for most of the companies right now. Sure. Uh, because, yeah. So how we are using is when we use, uh, for example, I take a, a term called business automation or process business automation, where we try to use distributive tasks, which, for example, sending a promotion email, or uh, we can say, uh, maybe email scheduling or um, you know such an event that such an activities that repeating we can use uh, process automation to reduce the workload of a company or of an employee to increase the efficiency of the company as well so in terms of b2b we are looking at how we want to improvise efficiency so like i said b2c is about satisfying customer needs uh, mm -hmm. B2B, we are looking at how we are increasing the efficiency or the process flow of how the company works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. 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 So, uh, uh, from your perspective, Mr. Mr. Nathan, uh, you know, where are we with respect to the maturity curve of AI offerings in marketing, and what do we need to do to move up the value chain? All right. Um, so in terms of application, um, of course, as, as for me personally, I couldn't answer for everyone uh, because we can see a different growth in different countries in terms of AI application. Uh, when we look to the West in terms of United States, their, their application uh, can say they are in the stage of AI advanced or AI ready. We can say they are proficient in AI. Uh, some other countries we look at, we are still in the AI, you know, in the, you can see the stage of still in the research stage or still in the getting ready stage in terms of AI. So um, maybe for example, I can take what is happening here. It's, it will be a very good example, I can say. So as we speak right now here is we are in the stage of, we can say we are still in the AI ready stage and towards the AI proficiency because uh, right now from 2020, 2019, 20 and 21, we have gathered mm -hmm. so much of data sets because the world has turned to digital. And these data sets are very usable or of great usability towards 
teaching machine learning models. Okay. Um, so um, to grow up the ladder, so that's a, a very good question. How are you going to grow up in the ladder? First mm -hmm. of all, uh, in terms of AI, I would say first I will reflect towards the talent side. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of the growth, in terms of job prospect for AI uh, capability uh, personals, we are still mm -hmm. lacking. We are still lacking in a way okay. that AI doesn't work by itself. We do need uh, engineers. We do need programmers to work on AIs as well. So yep. first of all, first of all, talent should be uh, invest. So companies, uh, big, big companies, I can say big corporate companies should be looking at to have a fund where they can use to actually train those uh, ready engineers or ready software developers to gain their skill in AI. Mm -hmm. because that's the way the only way for us was the first way to actually climb up the radar because we need to have a proficiency we need expert in order to develop ai to develop machine learning models to develop tools that that integrate ai as well so that's the mm -hmm. first thing I'm, I'm i'm looking at second thing i'm looking at is uh funding uh okay. to to generate to generate uh to create uh, a AI tool would definitely cost money. It would cost investment as well. So yeah. uh, it's required to have a really sufficient investment because uh, if we start to invest in AI, the process should be growing as time goes by in the period of time. There sure. shouldn't be sure. any any uh, stoppage in the middle because data that we are getting, the data doesn't stop. We are we are fit with data every single time. As we speak right now, there's a lot of data being we have been gathering. So that's the good jump into the third point now. Uh, data, sufficient data is required. Uh, it's basically how we train students or how we even eat. We have to feed more data so that the machine actually can learn and learn how our customers, our buyers are actually learning, how they are actually reacting towards what we are sending to them. Or maybe maybe they see a picture of a, a car or maybe a clothes. How they are sure. react to it. So customer behavior data are very important as well in terms of. So as I mentioned, three of them as as I, I emphasized was uh, investment or funding, uh, talent, and of course uh, we're looking at more data sets that we require to improvise and come up the ladder as well. Sure, yep. sure. To enrich, to enrich the uh, learning of machine learning of of the machine. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. So, what technology trends you would like to discuss uh, uh, that are that are going to shape in the near future? All right. Uh, I will start with the first. Uh, there's few. So, I will start with the first one in terms of uh, the trend in terms of business automation uh first i will start from that so business automation trend has been increasing as well uh as we speak that we don't want to have repetitive task and we don't want to reduce our efficiency so we try to automate whatever we could mm -hmm. and to improvise the workflow for example mm -hmm. um of what we do uh specifically we have uh we have created a item called inventory sync where mm -hmm. In store, in store we have inventory systems. We have uh, physical inventories, and okay. in their websites they have their own inventory. So what we realize the current issue with small in the small or medium enterprises that they wouldn't mm -hmm. have enough time to actually update their inventory as time goes by. Most mm -hmm. probably, if we buy in the website one unit in the desk, if they buy one unit, the website is not being updated as time goes by. So we have created a tool where we sync this inventory where if in the store was taken off by one, it will minus off the website saying that it's left for. So this inventory sync is worked by business automation and AI as well. So okay. basically, so this where what we are reducing here is we are reducing the time effort in every month. Most of companies will do inventory check or maybe six months once or you know, in year once they do inventory check. But we are updating inventory every second. There's changes in inventory. So by this, we are actually reducing a lot of time. We are reducing a lot of effort to actually check inventory. 
and there's no need actually staff for actually do that as well. So the next thing we can do with business automation are uh, selling emails. Uh, we need to engage customers. That's very important as a marketer. Uh, as we sell product, we shouldn't stop by just sending them. This is your uh, purchase summary because we have to keep on engaging with them and show that we are still there for them or we are still here. We still have new products. We are upcoming promotion. We have upcoming launch of products. So by engaging them, uh, we have to keep on sending emails. But imagine if we have 300 over clients or customers under your email base or database, we cannot be sending one by one because 300 by sending one by one, you might just miss out your prime time or the prime time to send email to get their attention. Yeah. yeah. So, Time, money, and also attention of customers is very important. So using business automation, we actually managed to send, we can send, I mean, 300 is very small. I mean, we can send even over 5,000 email at a time. So mm. we, are, we are engaging customers and by scheduling these emails or uh, text messages or WhatsApp messages, when we are scheduling, the customer engagement is always there, which create, um, create a sense of uh, happiness to customer where they felt that like they are remembered in a way. Next thing is uh, we are looking at the trend of personalization. We try to personalize their, their we can say their page basically. So when maybe if I log into Amazon and if Anand you log into Amazon, we might have a two different uh, list of products because these products are based on what I have bought previously and what you have bought. So when there's a personalization, it shows that uh, the company or the, the platform is actually understanding our needs and they remember our needs. But we know that behind this are basically AIs are working behind that. You all know that. So this, this small, small matters to customers, of course, when we personalize for them, even sending emails, uh, we always have the name where we say hi, we don't say hi, we hi, we replace with a name of the customer. So this create a, a customization, we create a personalization so that they felt they are in the circle of the community of our customers. That's the one trend I'm looking at. Uh, next trend, we are looking at chat box. Chat box been uh, a great demand uh, in recent years. Uh, and to be honest, personally, I felt chat box was uh, chat box are very useful uh, because if customers has okay, let's say customer entered a website. Of course, customers' uh, mindset is to find solution in few steps or to be in the right page in few steps because they wouldn't want to spend too much time on finding solution. So chat box has been a great yeah. I think that's the most basic AI tool that I actually firstly developed where we just can insert our problem or we just can insert certain keywords and the AI or the chat box will detect the keywords and give you the solution of who to contact to or which website to go to. So in recent years, uh, even uh, I've been reading an article recently, uh, Salesforce, we know Salesforce been predicting that in US, just in US, 99, 69% of US consumers have been using chat box and prefer to use chat box due to they want to reduce their time on solving problem. So, which is, I mean, it's, it's a very small thing. I mean, uh, getting to the getting to the point from, from A to B, if hmm. it's required five steps and three steps, customers will definitely go for the three steps. So, reducing the time take to actually solve problem. Uh, next thing we are looking at, uh, voice search. Voice search has been a, um, it's been a great tool as well. I personally, myself, I use voice search as well at home. Uh, we have a common product like Alexa. We have, uh, you know, we have Google search as well using voice. So voice search has been a very, I mean, it's a very, it's can say fastest way to actually search. Uh, in from the traditional method of typing keyboard, we just can just say voice and the AI will actually try to detect what words is being used and to give you the yep. results. So it's gaining traction for, I mean, recently it's been gaining traction. It's a very good, uh, uh, it's been a very good uh, effort. And what I believe that a marketer should do 
is whenever they have the keywords been mentioned by a customer, maybe we can say, uh, you know, turn on YouTube or you know, search for this. These keywords are those natural language of a human being. So these keywords are very important to use in terms of SOEs. Uh, personally, even for ourselves in our company, we actually take out whenever we search the common words that we use voice search, those keywords we actually read and we try to utilize it under our SOEs. Because human language as we speak, we are typing the language in the search bar as well. So yeah. uh, that's, that's one thing I'm, uh, we are looking at as well in the new trend. Um, um, another important uh, trend has been is the user experience and UI. Uh, user experience UI has been very important uh, because that actually gives a, a very good impression of your brand, your product to your customer. Even creating an app, uh, user interface, user experience has been very important because yes. uh, if our user interface looks very dull or looks mm -hmm. not welcoming, you are actually throwing off your customer from the first stage itself. Yes, I absolutely. Mean, uh, in terms, yeah, in terms of prospect customers, because if your brand is well known, you wouldn't have mm. issues. But if your brand is still growing, this small thing, user experience, user interface are very, very important and shouldn't actually miss because that's a very like a I can say like a a very important point that you can utilize to grow. So nowadays, user interface is uh, I mean this variety. I mean we have seen a lot of kind of user interface. Sometimes mm. you just see all of your requirements just fit in one page. So why and nothing about user interface is very important and actually complicated as well. Uh, why I'm saying that because we do have different customer age. We have a younger generation and we have a, a older generation. Sometimes even the font that you're writing can be small, but border generation maybe can take it but not the older generation. So user experience and user interface are important as well in current trend as well. Yep. So that's- Very valid, uh, very valid points, uh, Mr. Nathan, wherein uh, you, you rightly brought out the differences or nuances of uh, different generations and you know how user experience needs to be sensitive to both of them, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for that. So what sort of upskilling or training interventions uh, you advise uh, for, for the marketing team members uh, to bring them up to the curve for AI uh, enablement? Definitely. Um, in terms of current um, marketers, or we can say the traditional marketers, uh, we can say skills such as digital marketing is a very common, very basic skills that every marketer should have right now as we speak before before we go to the stage of ai digital marketing is the the basic foundation we need to know so uh i would advise in terms of the digital marketing is a the first or must take course or training for any marketers uh, in terms of digital marketing i think it consists of social media in terms of uh digital advertisements and uh digital messages as well. So digital marketing is very important. Uh, that skills are very important. Next skills we are looking at after digital marketing, the next step will be digital analytic or data analytics. Data analytics is very important because I'm, I'm saying uh, I'm saying such a way that we are moving in a hierarchy so that on the top we reach AI. So digital marketing is first, then we go to data analytic. Data analytic training is required, skills are required because we need to know that what we are working on. Because AI is just a, a machine, it's just a model. In order that thing to run or the model to run, data is the fuel to run AIs. So Absolutely. We, so we need to know how we're going to select the data. We need to know how we're going to categorize this data and we need to know how we're going to implement this data because sometimes there's so much data, some are useful and some are, some are not. Some data can generate good leads, some might not. So data, we as a marketer, we should know how to differentiate what data that we are going to use and what data is going to create the best result 
and best implementation towards AI. And sure. after data analytic, then we are generally we are looking at which uh, AI as a main training, how we are developing AI models, how we are developing machine learning models. So these are the skill and definitely when we are saying it, it sounds a lot, but definitely as, as for the starting for any marketers, it's definitely is good to know what is the basic of it, how it works, how does it bring advantage to customers and how does it bring advantage to the company? It's good to know the basics for, uh, for marketers because we know that these skills are very important for developers. They, they need to know in and out, but marketers should know how this thing works and how they can benefit from them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, very valid points. Uh, and thanks for the sharing the, you know, uh, each item in a, in a, in a stepwise manner. Okay. Uh, uh, moving towards my last question, what would be your advice or recommendation to the marketing fraternity or, or the young young marketeers? Uh, sure. So, of course, in terms of advice, uh, I, I wouldn't say I will give advice directly because, uh, of course, there was there's more uh, great marketers, you know, other than me. But I would definitely let you know that how how good I mean how's the best way to learn marketing. First of all, we need to think as customer. That's very important. Uh, mm -hmm. Before even thinking about AI, we have to learn how we're going to think as a customer. So what customer needs? If I'm going to create a product or if I'm going to sell the product, does this meet the requirement as me as a customer first? If it meets, if it meets my requirement as a customer, then mm -hmm. I'm going to sell it because I know what's the reason that I was convinced and that reasons can be used to convince the customer. So the next thing is I would definitely uh, uh, request or you know advice to be updated with the new technology tools or the new ideas. For example, earlier we discussed about Metaverse. Metaverse mm -hmm. is a new tools. I mean, uh, something, I mean, it's just like, it's been a one month since the launch. So mm -hmm. it's very new. I mean, the opportunity is very big. So definitely, uh, we we I would request for those newcomers to actually learn what is MetaPace, uh, how you're going to utilize the digital environment, how you're going to drag customers to actually look at digital environment. Even for example, uh, Anand, uh, we have seen uh, recent days, uh, IKEA, for example. Uh, I know this is a uh, off the topic, but just for example. Sure. Uh, sure. Initially, IKEA, we know that if you want to buy furniture, we actually go to the store, you know, feel it, look at it, double check everything, and then we buy the furniture. But IKEA mm -hmm. has been creating virtual environment or augmented reality to actually look at the product from your home itself. Or you can even take the product to your and fit in your home. You just can use mm -hmm. your phone and just scan the product and just picture it at your home. And you can okay. check whether this is suit to your requirement. So yeah, yeah. So the most traditional way is just to go store and buy. But now we actually can just have this 3D model and just use your phone and just picture or project it to your a uh, hall and know okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I can buy this. So this yeah. reduces a lot of time. So definitely uh, another thing you have to look at as a marketer. Uh, we try to try to open up our mindset and try to look at the broader way of how we're going to market. Uh, I mean, nowadays, flyers, brochures is the a very old uh, methods of marketing. So mm -hmm. we need to start to learn how we're going to market in a different way. Uh, use virtual argument, uh, virtual reality, VR or AR, and um, try to use um, those SOE search, SOE search to Improvise and bring your brand on top where customers can see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, the most issue you can see in terms of why people are not upscaling or you know not taking the advice is, of course, the cost. So I would definitely uh, say that always think that this training or what you're learning, take it as an investment. The money that you're putting in, take it as investment. Like how companies are investing for technology, 
these skills are your technology you need to invest it as well yeah very nice thank you so much uh, uh mr taruma you know i essentially enjoyed the uh, real life examples and uh, use cases that you shared with us and uh, i'm sure uh, you know uh, uh, the the audience uh, who's uh, watching us live right now and uh, who would watch us uh, on demand later on would also benefit from uh, this discussion as much as i did okay uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us and and sharing uh, you know uh, your your thoughts on this important topic uh, thank you so much mr taruma yeah, guys uh, you can watch the past marketing monday sessions on www.sitsutv.news keep watching for more interesting upcoming sessions under marketing mondays i wish you all the success and a great week ahead stay safe and take care cheers bye bye for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel